For 30 years, the calabash was dripping bit by bit. Last year, we saw the bottom of the calabash falling off, and the whole fish rod was all over us. They were selling us out. They deserve none of our respect. They deserve no honor at all. We tired, and that enough is enough. For too long, we've been outside of politics. We see our children being taught under trees. We see people not having shelter. We see our elderly struggling for medical care. It is unacceptable. Our people are suffering. It is time that the whole of Namibia looks back to the history. That history is not a history for us to use against each other. We need to break the bonds from the past in order to emerge into the new nation truly united. You are the only vehicle that will bring about the change, the change that will ensure that Namibia will emerge from the darkness of this corruption. It is the change that Namibia needs. If we do not invest in them, if we do not empower them, we have no future. Namibia is not for sale. One of the fascinating things about museum is this, that they contain so much of the heritage. And when you look at them, you see how people used to live in those days. I don't know why Namibians don't come to museums. If you want to find the history of the country, go to the museum, go to the graveyard. Isn't it fascinating when you come to a building like this and you find in here a whole series and a range of what exactly reflects what Namibia is all about, who we are. And when you look at the history of our struggles and coming to our independence and find out what actually drove us to come together, you find that there is much more that unite us, our heritage unite us more than anything. And there are people still that seems to be having a colonial hangover ever since Namibia's independence. There has been always an attachment to what it is that everybody contributed to to bring about the independence of Namibia. And that is the classic thing, when you look at these pictures, you look at Namibia as it was before independence. And now when you look at some of the pictures on the other side, you see how the society has come together. So we've got bits and pieces from everybody else that make us what we are now, and it's that past of ours that build us. I still find it fascinating and rather not so fascinating but shocking that people continue to blame apartheid that disappeared in 1978 for every evil that they have come to identify after independence. But what is extremely important is to understand that it is time that the whole of Namibia looks back to the history and honor the history rather than using the history as a wedge to try and carve out a future. That history is not a history for us to use against each other. It's a history for us to recognize. And when you come to museums like this, you actually find how we gradually developed into the sophisticated nation that we've become. And when people after the independent presidential candidate last year demanded a political home where they can freely express themselves, it was necessary to take stock and to carry out a questionnaire to understand exactly what is it that will be able to give Namibians a political home that they can truly call home, where they can come together irrespective of their race, irrespective of their tribal and ethnic origin, regardless of their gender, regardless of their contribution to the liberation struggle.
first time in Namibia we've got a political home. We've got a place where each person in Namibia is welcome. And it's no matter about your race, your language, your culture, or your tribe, or anything. Every person in IPC is just seen to be a Namibian. And that's why we call each other patriots as well. And I can't think of a better term to call my fellow man as a patriot. Because in Namibia, that's what I feel about Namibia, is I'm patriotic about my country, I love the people of Namibia, and I love being a part of the first time being a part of a political organization that gives me a home. It was necessary to define the name of the organization so it's reflective, including what the members of the organization would be calling each other to make sure that those members, when they are referring to each other, they are not discriminating in any way and they are not bringing back memories as bad and sad as they are of wars, of hatred, etc. And it was necessary to look for a central name that will reflect and make people truly be Namibians. Patriotism was called upon to become part of the name and that's why we needed to be relinquished our bonds from the past. We need to break the bonds from the past in order to emerge into the new nation truly united and the independence of everyone from whatever you contributed, from whatever came about to be who you are, was necessary and hence the independent patriots. And patriots that are independent of anything that they had in the past, independence of from parental bondage, independent from any other political parties that came into existence, whether it's claiming to be the first, the second, or having contributed to the independence of this country. But all this together in order to struggle using the Namibian constitution as a means of attaining change. Change from what we seem to be traveling on this projectile of self-destruction in which so many things has been taking place, so much looting of our natural resources, so much pain that has been caused as a result of the poverty that seems to be increasing rather than decreasing, notwithstanding political statements. The IPC gave us the chance to also voice what we've been feeling. And that's the same feeling that we've been getting from the youth in Namibia is that we're tired and that enough is enough. For too long we've been outside of politics. We've sat on the couches and we've shouted for change. And how I got involved is somebody on our community group said, somebody needs to do something. And I realized, but I'm also somebody. But you're also somebody. Why don't you come to the party and make sure we bring the change to Namibia that we so desperately need? Throughout our efforts, we decided the best way to build an organization is to start from the base. Building the branches from the base, making sure we are adhering in our communities, making sure that the members of our communities are participating in the decision making, not only of how the organization shall be run, but who will be the leaders of the organization from the locality. And this is where our traditional way of electing leaders doesn't work for Namibia. It created an elitist group of people who became looters. They were looking after each other but not looking after the people that brought them into power. And this is the reason why grassroots participatory democracy is extremely important as a feature in our organization. And we created principles that are responsive to the needs of the people and that is honesty, integrity, dignity and the rule of law. Rule of law is a classic important part of any governance structure. In the absence of any rule of law, there will be chaos. And chaos is what Africa has been identified to be over the many years of many of the African countries that has attained independence. But these ones were the bright places and the bazaars of the old location. You know, there was somebody who used to play really well there. And you still hear it when you start playing people start dancing on the streets of Katutura. Absolutely fascinating. But that is also the time that we had churches that people attended. 
We had hospitals where the nurses were really carers and the doctors were really looking after people. But these days, without any pride in the professions, is shocking. It's incredible how a country with so many resources is unable to cater for a very small population such as ours. In fact, it's a shame for us not to be able to take care of our people, particularly a nation that is unable to take care of its young and its elderly. is a nation that is, that is destined for doom because those are the backbones. The old people, the elderly people, they carry the wisdom that we need to direct us. The young people are the backbone because they are the workforce. If we do not invest in them, if we do not empower them, we have no future. And as a result, it is important for me to take a stance. And I believe the IPC is granting me the opportunity to be able to make that change. And when Namibia attained independence, one has to be extremely honest that there hasn't been the degree of poverty that we are experiencing in various parts of the country at the moment. When I left Namibia in 1981, there weren't any informal settlements. Yes, in the old location, people had accommodation similar to what we find in informal settlements. Yes, we find those sort of accommodation put together in sink plates in places like Ochivingwe, even in Okakarara. But it was not to that extent where you've got 995,000 Namibians living in informal settlements. And the poverty cycle seems to be taking off and just keep on repeating itself. Those that were born of at, at independence in 1990 continue to suffer the same as their parents. And one wonders, how long is this going to take place? It has been 30 years since independence and we still blame the former regime for all of the downfalls that we have, all of the things that have gone wrong. And they're not stopping. It continues on a daily basis. We see media reports that talk about looting, that talk about people having priorities misplaced. We see our children being taught under trees. We see our young people with graduate diplomas and degrees in the streets. We see our elderly struggling for medical care. We don't have running water and electricity. Our people are suffering. And I've been around this country um, ever since I joined politics to see really what it looks like to be a Namibian. It is unacceptable, particularly in a country that is full of abundance, both above the ground and beneath the ground. I fully support what Dr. Itula stands for because to come from a party that you've been tortured for, for your beliefs, and to climb out of that because you've realized it's not what you fought for and it's not what your people have died for, takes a lot of courage. And I like people with courage and I like people that take up the flag and walk the walk and talk the talk. And that's what Dr. Itula does every single day and you will never see him put himself above the people he's one with the people of namibia and that's the reason why i'm here and that's the reason why i availed myself and threw all of my energy in behind ipc because it is the change that namibia needs and it is there for each and every namibian and it is our political home we are trying to make facebook friends in europe etc and yet we don't even know our own people how we exist we don't know each other and the most important thing is, is that once we know each other, there will be much more harmony amongst our people. In my individual capacity, but also as a collective who believes in the same things, a collective that believes that change is possible, a collective that believes that we have to instill hope in our people, that this country can still be saved. Namibia is not for sale. And as such, we have to do everything we are humanly able to do to make sure that this country is safe. IPC has brought to me the opportunity to partake without political credentials, without struggle credentials, but the mere and sheer belief that this country belongs to every citizen and the citizenship is granted upon birth. It's not granted by ethnicity, it's not granted by race, it's not granted by the color of our skin or the color of our eyes or the type of hair we've got. 
but it is granted merely on the basis that you are born within the territory of this land. And as such, we believe in an inclusive Namibia. A Namibia with every young person, every old person, every business personality is able to identify and say, I am a child of this land and I have a part to play. And therefore, the Independent Patriots for Change is truly a, an organization which will be able to reflect the needs of the Namibian people in the locality, in the communities, the needs of the Namibian people nationally, and our relationship within our subcontinent and the continent and the globally as well, in order to make sure that we've got mutually respectful and mutually beneficial relationships with all nations. The kind of situation that we have seen in Namibia since independence, where some nation seems to be more dominant in determining how our resources are benefiting our people, more so how they are benefiting their people is not acceptable to the Namibian people. We said and we said it again that Namibia is all we have including its resources. Namibia is not for sale including its resources and we said that we've got an obligation by way of our heritage to protect and save it against all forces within and without Namibia. And as a consequence of that, it's entirely up to every single patriot in Namibia, every single compatriot in Namibia, to take it upon themselves to ensure that the outcome of these elections are going to be expressive and going to be the vehicle through which we will be able to ensure that Namibia remains to the Namibians and that our resources are protected and that we are able to save it for the benefit of the current generations and also future generations. For 30 years the calabash was dripping bit by bit. Last year we saw the bottom of the calabash falling off and the whole fish rod was all over us. And yet they were selling us out. They deserve none of our respect. They deserve no honor at all. If anything, they deserve living from the Namibian people. Because we are a nation which is not going to be separated by our diversity. Our diversity will be the wealth that is going to unite us rather than the ex that is going to separate us. Namibians, you don't have no choice. You've got a choice to bind together as a nation irrespective of your racial origin, your ethnic origin, your tribe, or whether you are tall, ugly, and beautiful. You are all Namibians, and today you are the maker of that change. You are the maker of change that will bring about the difference. You are the only vehicle that will bring about the change. The change that will ensure that Namibia will emerge from the darkness of this corruption. That Namibia will emerge, and one day you truly will be saved. Land of the brave as you have just been singing. You will soon be looking at yourself and saying, IPC has come not only to rescue the Namibian people, but to wage a path towards the future of our nation. Yeah.